الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين أيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم بمددكم ونزلكم سيدي رسول الكريم يا حبيب العظيم الحمد لله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول أولي الأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول أولي الأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ya Rabbil Arshin Alameen. Allahu wa la hayya la hayu ya qayyum, 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 Allahu wa la hayya la hayu ya qayyum. Bimadadakum wa nazarakum Sayyidi Rasulul Kareem, alhamdulillah, such a blessed night and blessed weekend and, and dhikr of Allah that this immensity of Israhi wa Miraj is an immense rahmah for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad That is Allah brought up the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad to His Divine the Presence and that that reality and the arwa, the light and the nur of Sayyidina Muhammad is in a continuous mirage and movement towards the Divine the Presence. As a result of that immensity of that station and proximity to the Divine the Presence, we're all blessed by that light, dressed by that light. And that Allah opens that gate on the 27th of Rajab to sit and to be dressed and blessed by that emanation, a door towards that reality to uplift the servant, grant the servant a, a dress and a light that can't be achieved by any action other than the action of love. Because the one whom loves Sayyidina Muhammad sits to meditate and contemplate on such a great event and such a blessed event, only through that observation and the observance of that night and sitting in that night and praise and in praying and zikr, chanting and all good actions, then in the next day sitting to be dressed by its realities, blessed by its realities. Alhamdulillah Allah grants that from love, that ashiqeen and lovers, lovers of the Divinely Presence, lovers of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad they come with that love and only by means of that love their souls are in a miraj flying into that reality. Like a comet if Prophet is in front moving into that ocean, into that reality then all the ashiqeen their souls are being dressed and blessed by that light, its beatific lights. Such a immense night in which Allah brings all the angels, means all of paradises are adorned on this night. That all the angels from paradise they come out to greet the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad There's no time, that means it's a parda, a light, an event that is a perpetual event that that hijab when we hit onto the 27th of the 7th lunar month then this entire dress of all the angels coming out of their paradise realities to greet the Muhammadan light as it's being dressed and blessed and all the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad that are accompanying with that love moving in that mirage to be dressed and blessed by these lights. The immensity of the Divine love for that reality and alhamdulillah by just loving and imitating that love Allah granted this, this immense opportunity to be dressed and to be blessed by it. InshaAllah complete His ni'mat and His favours upon our soul and dress us from the heat where you feel the heat within your being of that light and of that love and by means of that light to cleanse us, take away every difficulty from us and to bless us as the world is coming into its final chapter that Allah complete His favours upon our soul, upon our families, our communities and all our loved ones that Ya Rabbi dress us from these lights, bless us from these lights and the for sake of, for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad forgive us our wrongdoings and our bad character 
And regardless of those, Ya Rabbi dress us and bless us for the sake of your love for Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon Salaamun Al Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa Wa Bi Siri Surat Al Fatiha Al Kashafat Ya Rasul Kareem Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen That when we talked about the particle and the wave always a reminder for myself that the nafs, somebody had asked that the nafs its role in this understanding is to keep the servant from becoming a wave. So means that everything that the nafs inflicts upon a person and their humanity is to keep and restrict them from achieving their wave reality, to achieve the light reality that's within them. And that's the role that the nafs is playing, is to keep the person be in their physical and in their physical design. And that's the, the difficulty of achieving any spirituality or any significant improvement in our spirituality if we can't reach to the wave reality. So that was an interesting email that somebody had asked that, What's the role of the nafs in the particle and the wave? And Allah put the nafs there as a, as a source in which to keep us as a particle and that's our testing in life. If we're going to follow the nafs then the nafs whole duty is to make us a particle in which we are not capable of observing ourself and that we don't reach to any spiritual ma maturity. So that we constantly are required to remain under supervision and as a result of that supervision we cannot reach to our wave reality. And those that follow their nafs too much in their desires then you can see that it's completely making them part of a particle, so much particle almost like a statue that they're not just semi-dunya they're like full dunya and they become what they call what? What's a popular term for these people? Idols. So there's nothing hidden, shaitan makes everything to be out. It's that people just don't have ears and eyes to see it, that when they become so much in their dunya they actually become mujassimiyun, they become a statue, they become an idol. They have no longer any, any relationship to their soul and to their way of reality. They've calcified and, and actually has become a statue and as a result of their statueness they call out to people to worship them, what they call their fans and those whom are idols and idol worshippers. So you can see how much difficulty shaitan has put upon this earth. If you think that idol worshipping before was for what? That they took a, a symbol of something and thought by putting their attention on it which is worshipness, putting their all their, their thought and their mind and, and following everything about their being is put upon that idol thinking it had some sort of benefit for it. And Allah would describe that neither it can benefit you nor harm you, it actually has absolutely nothing to do or for you and look at modern day idolism. It's from their own words, not words we've made up, they call themselves idols. They have shows to make an idol and everybody who follows these idols they're like worshipping them. Every moment what they're doing, how they're eating, well, what, what clothes they wear and all is reminding that the old school idol worshipping which is backwards compared to today's idol worshipping. Because today's idol worshippings they have brought an immense amount of technology into their idol worshipping. Old school idol worshippers would look at us and say, ooh where you guys took this? You've taken it such an advanced level. They had one little statue and look how much Allah was angry with them. Now everything in our existence on this earth now is an idol and which idol you think you're going to follow? that will lead you to somewhere, have some sort of benefit for you, watch what they drive, watch what they eat, watch what they dress, none of which you can do, none of which has any benefit for you and has a tremendous amount of harm. 
that it wasted human life, it wasted their focus. Instead of focusing upon the reality and on the heavens and closing our eyes from this world and trying to reach within our spiritual reality, then Allah is, is reminding for us, you know how shaitan has brought idol worshipping into your realm and how significant it is that 90% to 99% of the population are all following it. We said before there are people with a certain style of recitation that come from South Central Los Angeles but now they're being the same recitation in Japan and Hong Kong and Indonesia all over the world and they have never seen these people but they sound like them, they dress like them, they act like them. And all of that is from the hadith of Prophet that you follow people, you'll follow them. You follow them all the way until they take you within the whole. So they left their Islamic identity and they began to associate with these idols and begin to worship them. They give their money to them, they give their heart to them, they give their eyes, their ears and their breath to them. We pray that Allah destroy idol worshipping within our hearts, within our lives, within our families and our children and our communities and that He open from His blessings this love and this ishq for Divinely Presence that only Allah's light can save us. Means that when we sit for this night people ask you, what's the importance of sitting? Because we don't understand the danger that we have entered into. When awliyaullah come and inspire within our heart that you know that you're in the midst of immense idol worshipping immense badness, immense azab, immense qadab and anger of Allah These nights what their importance are? It's just you're lucky to be sitting on that carpet because if Allah begin to dress the soul, He dresses it and washes it from His anger, washes it from any type of difficulty and badness. And these are not things that can be taken away with just our salah and our zakah. It has to do with the ishq and love that, Ya Rabbi those whom they love Sayyidina Muhammad they're gathering for that love and Allah promise in Qur'an, I would not punish them while you're amongst them and that they're asking for forgiveness. Means every majlis of ours we're asking for Prophet the Yasir Ya Rasulul Karim Allah going to punish us. We're in the midst of immense difficulty, keep your nazar upon us. Keep your love upon us, keep your company upon us for your company like is a shield from the anger of Allah and from every difficulty coming. With that love and with that ish that you dress us and bless us. Your majestic light if it looks to us it take every dirtiness away and make it to be beautific so that when Allah look at that light he finds a happiness because he sees whom he loves. He sees Muhammadun Rasulullah, that light emanating from your heart and from your souls. The immensity of these nights and gatherings is not entertainment, it's praying and, and, and immense amounts of prayers and worshipness that, Ya Rabbi let us to catch these blessings, save us from these difficulties, save us from these hardships that are coming wherever they are, wherever they are in their homes, on their carpets, in their couches. Wherever they are, dress them from that rahmah, dress them from that blessing, take away the dirtiness and difficulties in which shaitan has put upon us and made every type of hardship to come upon us only through this love and this intercession. This intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad every Prophet received the gift, Khalilullah, Ruhullah, the gift of Sayyidina Muhammad is this shifa and intercession. That why is intercession? Because Nur Muhammad is the only light that can destroy every light and bring it back up to its majestic beauty. Shafat al Qubra on the day of judgment, all nations, all nations will be running to Prophet with all their prophets saying, I'm not the one who can save us. Let us run to Sayyidina Adam, from Sayyidina Adam let us run to Sayyidina Nuh to intercede for us. Let us run to Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Musa to intercede for us. And they'll all gather to Sayyidina Isa and Sayyidina Isa will say, no my people worship me like a God, let us 
run to Sayyidina Muhammad the grand intercessor for Allah and Prophet described, I begin to make a du'a that no one has heard. And I go into sujood and I begin to make du'a and praise upon Allah And with every praising Allah accepts and only Allah have seen with their heart that the du'a that Prophet is making of lights and immense lights that emanate like waves. We see in movies the imi imitation of the movie images, a wave that hits every soul and crushes all of its badness and brings it back up to its beatific light. And Prophet begins again another wave of light through his recitations, Li walhamd that the significant power and majestic reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is that tongue that reveals Holy Qur'an begins to make a, a zikr and a munajat and a du'a to Allah as if it's the du'as of Qur'an coming out that Allah not to refuse it. The light not something that can be imagined and like waves dressing upon souls taking away every badness, every bad character and returning them to be beatific angelic realities above angelic realities. So we pray by these nights that we come and we sit for these events that Allah recognize that we're only gathering for love Ya Rabbi, that we're trying our best to be of service and to be dressed by these lights, take away difficulties, take away all our bad character, save ourselves, our family and our loved ones, save our communities and keep us in the embrace and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana Rabbika Rabbal Izzat Amma Yasifoon, Salaam Ala Mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Bi Hurmati Muhammad Al-Mustafa Wa Bi Siri Surat Al-Fatiha. <laughs>